clean up. It would probably be that way every game, right? But uh, just proud of uh, the way we start fast, especially in the first half. Came back out in the second half, uh, challenged the guys, uh, did that again. So, you know, got to put a complete game. I know we got even a, a lot better that uh, we can be. And looking forward to seeing, uh, you know, the energy we have going into uh, this next week. How much of an emphasis there was, was there in the, the rushing attack after the lesson yards out there last week to really hone in on that today? Yeah, I think uh, I don't really think it was different than what it would have been the week before. Um, um, same number of run plays, um, same uh, same thought process as far as making sure you've got uh, different concepts. Uh, um, I think just think that uh, you know we continue to get better and continue to refine and. Uh, we're used to seeing our defense every day in practice, and you know, all of a sudden you get, get something different. And uh, you know, that, that that guy that you've been blocking on this play for you know, 24 practices or 25 practices in fall camp, you know, isn't the, in the same spot when you play someone else. And so, um, I think that we, uh, you know, we continue to evolve and we mix things up and did some different things, uh, but we'll do that every single week. So. I think it's just a product of, uh, of us just staying the course and going through the process of uh, putting a game plan together and the guys uh, executing it. Are, are you still a little surprised by the efficiency, considering that you scored the first six times you had the ball last week and the first four today? I mean, that's almost immaculate. Yeah, it, it's good to see, um, I guess, coming on the sideline, that there's not this, like, exhale, you know, and, like, this um, just uh, – we talk about it all – you guys have heard me talk about one and oh mindset, right? It's usually a response to adversity, but we talk about also the response to when things are going well. And human nature, right, is to let up and uh, relax. And we want to play relaxed, but we don't want to let off uh, the gas. You know, we want to stay focused and have that intensity and that urgency um, for four quarters. And so what I like right now is we're coming off the sideline and there's an expectation to go do it again and it's backed up by focus, effort, and um, a desire to, to, to be great, you know, and um, that's what's really cool to see. Um, that being said, um, I thought in the first quarter, um, just the first couple drives, um, and we had a few guys in a couple different spots. You guys saw that one did play, um, but uh, we had a few guys in a couple different spots, and, um, you know, that little bit of just uh, difference, you know, with personnel affected sometimes how we lined up. You know, one time uh, there was a little bit of question on, Emotion, and then because of that, it took longer, and now the offensive line in their in their in their stance longer, and we got a false start. And so, just that rhythm that I'm talking about by being perfect with our motions and our alignments and our shifts, you know, leading to great execution. The execution still ended up being there just because uh, we've run some of these plays so many times, um, but just some of the little details um, we can still be better at. You mentioned Rome Jackson was out too. Jordan Perry yeah. went out too. Yeah, any, Rome, any? Rome could have played. Um, just really cautious with him. Um, really minor thing. Um, could have played an emergency, uh, and so he'll be ready to go for sure next week. Um, Jackson, we're still working through the process. Uh, we'll continue to be day to day. Um, Rome was day to day. He was actually um, minute to minute up until, um, and then we just kind of took the more conservative route and just said, you know, only an emergency situation. And uh, we expect Jordan to be back next week too. Have you seen what you need to see in the last two games to feel confident going into next week? Um, yeah, I think we're always um, we're always going to. I mean, we're definitely not there yet as a football team. Um, there are some things that we uh, we got to get better at. And, um, you know, we put things on film, and I think uh, last week the things that we put on film that we need to improve, we improved on some. I thought our special teams uh, was better, um, more consistent. Um, and so uh, that was good to see, and we're just uh, getting guys uh, comfortable. You know, some of these guys were in new spots, and then uh, all of a sudden you switch it up because that wasn't as productive as you wanted to be. And you know, you you you, you just live and learn, and uh, that's what you know we do, and that's why we practice. But um, what I do like, and what I know we're going to get is a consistency of effort every time we step on the practice field, um, a consistency of want to, and focus, and sacrifice. Uh, that comes with uh, being on the football field on game day. Um, I'm really glad we got a lot of guys a chance to play, but there, there's this, uh, and, and you, you know, it's hard to just make everyone perfectly happy, but man, we got a hot, happy locker room that uh, is excited about other guys making plays. And, um, you know, it's not about me, it's about, um, you know, the other guy, you know, and that's really cool to see.
you got Richard Newton back today in garbage yeah. time. And you haven't been here for his full journey with his injury history, but what have you seen since you've been here in terms of him working back, and, and what did you see in terms of how he did today? Yeah, man, it was <clears throat> the smile on his face um, was worth a million bucks. Um, I'm just really, uh, he, he's, a, he's a really cool kid. Um, I really got a chance to see, um, you know, there's some things as you this summer, I saw some things with his personality, I'm like, oh, that's cool, you know, and uh, um, just, he's really just so well liked by the team and his teammates, and um, you know, he's just been grinding through this uh, of getting healthy and getting a chance to be out there, and I know it just seemed like it kept dragging on and longer and longer, uh, but, you know, seeing him go out there and, uh, you know, um, he, he was not going to avoid people there early in the game, early in his opportunities. He was going to have contact, be physical, and it was fun to fun to see that and the smile on his face. So, guy like Richard getting him out there it means a lot to him, and uh, it was fun to see. You know, he's worked hard to come back. Giles, first career hundred game. Giles? Yeah. Yeah, it was. Uh, that's that's pretty cool. You know, Giles played a couple different positions in our offense this, uh, this, you know, he played some of the stuff that uh, he would normally do in, the, in those formations and personnel groupings. And then he also uh, overlapped into some of the things that Rome would have, uh, you know, been, been in for. And so um, he got a little extra duty um, and uh, that was a bigger role for him. Um, and he, you know, I thought handled it really well. Um, you know, there was a knowledge piece to it because personnel groupings, formations, play concepts, and uh, you can see that he's been processing things and worked hard. And uh, because of that hard work, uh, he was able to see success out there today. So fun to see uh, the smile on his face too, you know, knowing he put out uh, a great effort today. How, how do you so assess this? Missed a couple of early deep passes, but then found McMillan and yeah. seems to dial it in. Ha has he done everything that you envisioned when you brought him here? Yeah, I think some of those early ones, I mean, you know, yeah, he, he needs to make that throw, but there's just a little bit different timing because there's a little bit different personnel in there, you know, and that um, you practice it, but it's just uh, all of a sudden it gets live and, uh, you know, you miss it by a step or two. Um, and so, you know, where a guy you thought was going to break it, you know, even on the interception, just he didn't, uh, he, he'd get on the same page, uh, you know, he thought it was going to come in sharper and then he ended up having to throw over a guy and, um, or kind of around it and, uh, you know, those are just the little things that uh, allow us to, you know, now go into the film room and talk about it and, you know, learning those lessons and talking through that scenario because there's so many different looks that every play you get. And, um, you know, he's going to get a chance along with our receivers to be on the same page with a lot of different things that we just missed on. But uh, like you said, he came back, made a, made a strike to, to Jalen. I mean, I know Jalen was wide open, but some of those are some of the hardest throws and hardest catches to make sometimes. And so, uh, they did what they were supposed to, and it was fun to see them hook up uh, on that big uh, long drive. Coach, you uh, watched Jordan Perryman last week while well, Banks got in. Yep. You know, Julius Irvin over the corner. Are you a little bit concerned about depth at corner right now? Yeah, yeah, there is. Uh, and because those guys are the guys that also play a lot on special teams. You know, those are the safeties and the linebackers and the corners. And, you know, I mean, there's guys on offense too, but, uh, you know, that's where just it, it does wear on you a little bit. And uh, we knew going into the season, it was one of those positions or that those areas because of the special teams impact, um, you know, they carry a heavy load. And so, um, you know, we're we're trying to build that depth. Um, I thought Julius uh, stepped in. I thought, I thought I'd seen progress from him again today. I thought uh, he played a little more physical. Um, and I think we learned uh, we had some growth moments as a secondary, you know, playing physical. And then we got called for some things. and. Uh, you know, then not playing as physical, and all of a sudden, you know, people are getting behind you. So there's growth moments and, and things to learn from. And, you know, I, what I love is just our, our mindset is, uh, you know, responding and, and taking the coaching and, you know, trying to make it better the next time. When uh, watching your defense, how much are you willing to risk, like, allowing big plays in um, to gain aggressiveness? You guys play a very aggressive style of defense, and it seems it's kind of risky. Yeah, uh, yeah. yeah, I mean, if you're... you're you know, that's right, it's a give and take, you know. Um, aggressiveness is gonna lead to maybe some, some moments where the ball's in the air and you got some one-on-ones. Um, but, you know, we gotta mix it up. And I think that's what our staff will do, continue to do a great job of and, and uh, mix it up to where you don't know. Um, and, uh, you know, when you're gonna have those one-on-ones or when it's, there's no help from a safety. And, um, you know, they do a great job. I think we disguise things pretty well, but, you know, there's once in a while where you're gonna get those one-on-ones and, you know, um, 50-50 balls. With that cornerback depth, 
where is Elijah in terms of coming back? We've obviously missed the last couple of games. Yeah, I I, um, I, I think there's a really good chance he'll be back here uh, this week too. Um, he, he's not necessarily what I say day to day, but uh, you know he's getting evaluated kind of every week. And um, there there was actually a week ago I was thinking there might be a chance he'd be back this week, and so. Um, I'm optimistic that he would uh, be able to come in and help us out. He would give us uh, some much needed help you know, for, sure. for sure, because he's running like he can run, and he's long, and um, he'd give us a lot of help there. Coach, you talked about you know your relationship with Ryan Grubb, and sometimes he just gets in a groove and you don't want to interrupt it. How good of a groove was he in today? And yeah. are you guys to the point where maybe you know what's coming next from Yeah, him? yeah, and I, I was asking a few questions. I mean. I want to know in certain situations, uh, even right before he goes up to the box, ask him just a couple more things to where, you know, especially in those third down and fourth down moments, you know, hey, are we still on the same page on this? Are we on the same page on that? If you, if, if I get you, if you're in a third and three, you know, what's your what's your call? You know, just making sure, because sometimes you, you do change. And if he did change because he saw something different on film or something's just not going or personnel changes and something gets dinged up, um, I, I totally understand, but that, he's done an awesome job. Him, he and his staff, because he does such a great job of, uh, you know, you know, managing it and running it and executing and, and keeping the defense on their toes. But throughout the course of the week, managing the staff and uh, everyone being involved, and uh, he's got awesome ideas. He knows what our how, how to mix it and match and put it all together. Because I mean, if you really watch our concepts. Across college football, everyone runs the same concepts. It's how you package them and how you run them and when you run them. And uh, he's just in a good rhythm. And you know, the, the players always make you be the first one to tell you. The players always make you look good. And uh, when those guys are making uh, the throws, the catches, the protections, and then converting um, in those in those big moments, um, then they make you look good. But he's done an awesome job. It's cool to see him find his rhythm and and uh, have confidence and you know set the standard of what we want to be. Okay. Denzel Boston was able to get in the end zone today. Um, how important is it to have a game like this where you can get some younger guys yeah. involved in the offense? Yeah, Denzel's had a really good fall camp, um, and it was cool to see him be rewarded, um, you know, finding the end zone. And um, he's going to be a great player here. Um, he's consistent. That's what I love about him. He's consistent, catching the ball. He's learning. There were some things that uh, he could have done a little better, maybe missed, uh, missed a little piece here and there that uh, – you know, botched up uh, the timing on some stuff, but uh, he, for the most part, is uh, for where for where we're at with him as a true freshman, um, and what we're asking him to do in his uh, in his role. Um, it's it's pretty impressive, and uh, he's a super cool kid, and he wants it bad, and uh, we're glad he's here for sure. Okay, is this an extra you? coaching challenge for you this week? You, uh, you guys have had it somewhat your way with two, uh, you know, MAC opponent, the Big Sky opponent, and now you take on the Big Ten. You have to. Uh, you guys have to step up as coaches mm -hmm. to tell your team it's just not that easy, uh, considering what's coming. Yeah, I think our guys know that, and I think that it's a it's an everyday message that we have as far as you know um, talking about what our response to adversity is going to be, and hey, you know, getting better and improving, and uh, that, you know, we call it the relentless pursuit of of, ex of uh, continuous improvement. You know, and um, you know, I think what we're going to find is when that adversity comes because, you know, and, and it's been, it, there's little at times here and there where the adversity hits us in a game, these first two games, but, uh, you know, um, playing throughout the rest of the season, not just this next game, um, we'll find out where our locker room is all about. You know, all the things, when things are going good, um, good, I think I'm confident in these guys. I feel like there's a, a genuine, um, you know, care and love that they have for each other. And um, that's gonna come through and, you know, we, we just, uh, going to continue to make adversity temporary, you know, and move on to the next play. You guys had quite a few guys get involved in the passing game today. I mean, I'm kind of touching on his question earlier. How important was it just to get a lot of different players involved and kind of get them experience on the field before you're playing teams like you are next week? Yeah, it, it's, it's just going to be part of who we are offensively. I think last week we had maybe 10 guys catch balls, probably at least that again today. And um, the other part is, is guys getting out there that uh, just work hard in practice. I mean, there's guys – you know, the, the, sometimes it looks a little bit messy at the end of the game. Well, it's because some of those guys were on scout team the entire week, and the only reps they got were in a walkthrough before practice. You know, and now we get some action, and it doesn't always go perfect, and, uh, you know, the, um, that, that, that's, that's a piece of that, you know. And so um, it's fun to just reward those guys. And, and I, I saw some smiles, and I heard some things from guys that 
said that was one of the coolest moments uh, they've ever been a part of, and they got to take a couple snaps today. So um, that that's why we work, and that's uh, what we want to do as coaches is make this a uh, memorable time in their life. Looks like Vince, Vince Nunley was on crutches today. Who's that? Vince Nunley. Uh, yeah, yeah, Vince. Vince. Um, Vince will really probably be with us the rest of the year. Yeah, um, that, that's that's probably more likely what it's going to be. So, so again, with the depth piece, mm -hmm. you know, we got to continue to work to to to, to have that depth. Coach Jalen said uh, before the season, shortly before the season, he lost his grandfather. Do you know much about their relationship and how you see him kind of play inspired because of that? Thank him. Yeah, he said that. Yeah, he talked about that just now. Just now. I just didn't want to talk about it if he did if he wasn't the one. Um, I'll tell you what, you talk about a, a guy who's got a big heart, and that's Jalen McMillan. And um, he was super close to his grandpa. And you talk about a guy who I've just seen grow, not just as a player, but as a person, and go through some hard times during fall camp. Um, man, I couldn't be more proud of uh, how he's handled, you know, how he's handled everything. How he's handled himself as a man, how he's been so strong, even though he's hurting inside. Um, his grandpa meant the world to him, and I know he's playing for someone more than just himself. You know, not just today, not tomorrow, but the rest of his career, the rest of his life. You know, um, it's just really cool to see seeing Jalen um, have have something that's uh, you know he's playing for a greater purpose than just himself for sure. Okay, all right, thanks everybody.